In this physics tutorial lesson, we'll be trying to solve yet another question on the VT graph, which is the velocity time graph. Okay, so you're given this question here, and the question for this diagram is from the velocity time graph above, which is this graph here, which of the following cannot be determined? A, you said acceleration, B, initial velocity, C, total distance traveled, D, initial acceleration. So which of these quantities can we not determine given this diagram? That's the question. Now, how do we solve this question? Now, here's what to do. For each of them, I'll try to possibly determine them or the value. So you'd also see how we can solve this, okay? Now, remember that we've already treated the concept of the velocity time graph in a previous jam lesson. If you missed the class on velocity time graph, I'll leave a link to our first class on this topic in the video description. Now, let's jump right into it. So let's start with the first one there, A, deceleration, all right? So let's start with the first one there, A, deceleration, D, C, L, R, S, R, now, how do we calculate deceleration? Note that deceleration is the same thing as negative acceleration. Okay? You call deceleration negative acceleration or you can also call it retardation. It is simply a kind of acceleration that brings the motion of a body to rest. How do we calculate deceleration given a diagram like this? Now, you focus on the path that goes downward. That slants downward like this right so always focus on the part that slants downward as you can see here that's where you can get your deceleration okay now for this diagram here you can see that the part that slants downward is this one here this part here so let's assume we're asked to find deceleration okay what we do is just simply we we'll take this first part here this one that's up here we'll take this as the value of v1 and t1 we we'll also take this part here that is down, this final part here, we'll take this as V2 and T2. So we have this. Now we know that acceleration or deceleration is equal to, let me, this is equal to change in velocity all over change in time. This is the unit, this is the formula for acceleration, okay? Change in velocity all over change in time, and that's usually equal to V2 minus v1 all over t2 minus t1 let's pick out the values for each of this what's v2 if i look at this diagram here v2 is the value of v at this point that's at this point here which is this at this point here if i choose the value of v from here trace from v trace this downward here you can see this the value there is actually zero that's this so it means that v2 is actually zero so that becomes 0 minus, let's get V1. What's V1? We'll come here to your V1 axis here. That's this point here. This very point, this axis here, this point. We'll trace the value of V. That's simply trace it to the left-hand side, which is here. You can say the value is actually what there? 60. So that value there is this one here, 60. So trace it to your left-hand side. That's all. So V1 is actually 60. So 0 minus 60 all over for us to get the value of the time we have to trace the same points downwards so for t2 it becomes from here this point here trace this down so you can see that t2 is actually 42 as you can see in this question there so t2 is 42 for t1 this is the same point for one so just trace this downward like this you can see that t1 is actually 20 so t2 minus t1 becomes 42 minus 20. All right, so this is equal to 42 minus 20. All right, so the value for deceleration is now equal to 0 minus 60 is minus 60 all over. Next thing I have there is 42 minus 20. And if I punch 42 minus 20, that gives you what there? 22. And if you punch it, that becomes minus 60 divided by 22. And that's about minus 2.73, 2.73 in meter per second. So observe that the value there is negative. 
That's why we call deceleration a negative acceleration or retardation. So that's the concept. All right. So this is the value of deceleration. That means deceleration can actually be determined. So A is not the answer. Let's come to B. B says initial velocity. Can we determine the initial velocity from this question? Well, that's yes. The answer is true. Now, if you're looking at initial velocity here, for this question here, we're considering from the very first part of the graph. All right. The idea about the VT graph is that you should know where to start from when you're considering specific values. And I've said if you're considering the deceleration, as we said in our previous, um, in the part A there, right, we said consider the part that slants downwards like this. That's what, that's what we said, right? But if you're looking for the initial velocity from the entire graph, so for the entire graph, where does velocity start from? Now look at the velocity axis, which is this one here, which is literally your vertical axis going upwards. So if I'm looking for initial velocity, what I would do is simply, simply, if I have my graph like this, where's the first point that I have a line running out from the vertical axis? That's the question. Where's the first point that you have a line running out from the vertical axis? In this particular question here, we can see that in this case, this is where I have my first line. So this becomes the value of the initial velocity, which is what there, 60, the unit here is a meter per second. So my initial velocity is 60 meter per second. So this one can be determined as 60 meters per second. That's very easy. The next thing there is total distance traveled. Again, as I said, I will try to determine them. So we can see C is total distance traveled. If I'm to get total distance traveled from a VT graph, what do I do? All right. Uh, total distance traveled. From a VT graph, what do I do? Now, you notice that for you, to, for you to get distance of a VT graph or total distance of a VT graph, you have to take the area of each of the shapes you see. All right, take the area of each of the shapes you see. How do you do that? First things first, I will section this into section one and section two. Observe that section one is a rectangle, all right? The shape there is a rectangle, and section two is a triangle. So how do we solve this? First things first, we'll go to this. We'll take the area of section one. So area of section one, which is actually what there, a rectangle. And we know that area of a rectangle is simply length times breadth, and that's equal to, uh, what's the length of this? The length of this rectangle is distance from this point to this point. That gives you the length of the rectangle. And that becomes the upper value, 60, which is this, minus the lower value, which is this, which is what there? 10, or 0, please. That's 0. So 60 minus 0 gives you what there? 60. So from here, we can say that the upper or the length is actually 60. So I'll come here, 60 times, for the breadth, let's look at the breadth. Now, to get the breadth here, all we have to do is to take the distance from here to here. That's the breadth. So it becomes this value here, 20 minus this value here, 0. So 20 minus 0 gives you what there? 20. So it means that the breadth is 20. So it becomes 60 times 20. And if I multiply this together, 60 times 20, you'd have 1,200. All right? It will be in meters. Okay, so we have this in meters. Um, how do we solve this again? Now, just to show you why it's in meters, don't forget that if you look at the length, the length is the distance vertically, which is this side here, and the unit there is meter per second, so it becomes meters per second multiplied by the breadth is the distance horizontally, which we did like this, which you said is 20. If you look at the unit, it's in seconds, so it becomes times 20 seconds. So 20 in seconds, so sec this multiplies this, you are left with meters. So that's how we got the SI unit as what there? Meters. Just in case, we have to retreat that. All right, so we have this. We've gotten this. The next thing there is to get the area of section two. Section two is a triangle. So we get the area of section two. Let's look at area of section two which is a triangle now, all right? For a triangle, the area of a triangle is half times base 
times height all right the base is the part here the height is your vertical part all right so let's get base and height for this triangle here to get the base of this it becomes this one here the triangle starts here and stops here so all i have to do is subtract this value from this value and that becomes 42 minus 20 that gives you 22 as your base to get the height simply from here up to this point here this gives you your height and how do you get the value again the last value which is the top value here which if we trace this will have this as 60 so it becomes 60 minus this point here if we trace this here it gives us what the zero 60 minus zero is 60 so have base base is 22 times height height is 60 so half times half times base 22 times height 60 all right let's punch this half times 22 times 60 that gives about 660 again we said the unit to be in what's there meters that means total distance to get total distance all you have to do is to add up the distances for each of the section for section one the distance is 1200 that's 1200 plus for section two the distance is 660 of course both in meters so if i add this up it becomes um 1200 plus 660 which is 1860 in meters in essence we can calculate the value of the total distance traveled. it's possible the last thing we have there is initial acceleration now here's what to note we said earlier that if i want to get the value for deceleration i'll look out for this one here the one that slants downward now if you want to get for initial acceleration look out for the part that slants upward this way here starting from a and slants to b if i come to this diagram here what do you observe this diagram does not have that part now observe something let's say i have a diagram like this let me draw something similar this this okay and we have a part that goes this way and then goes up like this and then goes this way now what do you observe in this particular diagram the second diagram here what do you observe this part here let me call this a a will give you initial acceleration b will give you constant velocity and c will give you what the deceleration but in the diagram given in this question here observe that there is no a path this one does not exist that means the initial acceleration does not exist or we can't get initial acceleration from this one here so the answer to this question is initial acceleration but then an alternative way to think about this all right an alternative way to think about this about this is that we can say that acceleration a is equal to velocity over time right or change in velocity over time and that'll be equal to so like what about if it what if we take the initial values like the values here and here would that not work now let's see the velocity here at the very first point as you can see is actually 60 that's the value so it becomes 60 velocity 60 all over what's the time at this point at this point if i trace this downwards right trace this downward there the time there is zero 60 over zero and if you use your calculator to punch 60 all over time as zero what you have is a math error or you have what is called an undefined right it's undefined your calculator would pro probably give you mass error why because it is improper for the denominator of a fraction to be zero so this also further proves that we cannot get initial acceleration from this question okay all right guys so that's how we solve this so that means for this question here the answer is d initial velocity is the quantity that we cannot determine from this particular question okay so as i said earlier i'll leave a link to our first class on velocity time graph in the video description to so check the video description you see a link to our first class on velocity time graph okay don't forget that i've prepared over 100 classes on physics chemistry mathematics and other science subjects for jam and yx students okay so if you're taking either the jam or yx examination do well to get the course on my website simply visit www.jonaimari.com forward slash courses and you see the jam slash wire course 
Rest an account to the website and proceed to get the course. It gives you access, a lifetime access to over 100 classes on physics, chemistry, mathematics, and other science subjects. Okay. You can also join my Jam slash YX channel membership to get access to exclusive content for just Jam and YX channel members. Okay. I'll leave a link to my website as well as a link to join my channel membership in the video description. So check the description. You see a link to join my jam slash yek channel members okay all right so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like button please like this video okay give us a thumbs up it helps us to grow leave a comment for the comment tell us if you enjoyed this video if you have any question on this leave it in the comment section and i'll give you a response don't forget to also subscribe all right if it's your first time here or if you yet to subscribe please subscribe to this channel hit the subscribe button click the bell icon and select all so that you get notified whenever we upload new content. Then finally, share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next class.